Hello everybody, welcome back to JGS. Uh, I hope I'm finding you well. Um, uh, we are going to be continuing our little uh, trek through uh, the uh, parables of Jesus. And so uh, today we're going to be looking at the parable uh, of the sower. And so uh, we're going to be looking uh, at the book of Luke. Uh, we're going to be looking at uh, chapter 8 verses 1 to 15. Um, so uh, if you like, um, just uh, pause the video grab your Bible, open it, uh, read through the passage, and then hit play, and uh, we'll go through it together. So, uh, what, what, could, what might be um, really helpful to do is to, uh, to start off by uh, talking about the soils and uh, the seed. So, uh, first of all, we see uh, that the seed is the Word of God. Uh, and uh, it seems as though this is uh, directly related to the context of this. Um, so, we see in the very first kind of uh, uh, little first few verses, really, um, that Jesus is, uh, is going out and he's spreading the good news about the kingdom. Um, and uh, through this, uh, he's actually giving kind of like a statement about, you know, this is why I am uh, spreading the word, right? It's the same thing, right? He is the soul going out, spreading the word of the kingdom of God. Uh, and when he spreads out the word, uh, different reactions are had. We have the first reaction of the first soil. Uh, the soil is, um, you know, the, the seeds fall along the path. Um, they are trampled on and they're eaten by birds. And what this means is that uh, Satan comes along and steals the word from the hearts of the hearers. And as a response to that, uh, they do not believe. The second soil is uh, the soil well, it's, it's the rocky ground um, that has no moisture. And just like a plant needs moisture to grow, um, and without it, it, it can't grow, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't well, live for very long. And so in the same way, uh, this soil represents somebody who hears the word of God, um, but doesn't continue through it. You know, they respond with joy and gladness, um, but that doesn't last long. Uh, and they don't grow because uh, they don't, um, I suppose, go go into the word and uh, continue to look through it and read it. Um, instead, um, they respond to it once uh, and then they don't uh, grow themselves um, through continuing to listen to the word of God. Um, the third uh, soil is uh, the thorns. Uh, so the, the seed gets thrown out among the thorns. Uh, and then as the seed grows, uh, the thorns grow up with it and choke it. And similarly, uh, this is supposed to uh, represent um, the, the person who hears the word of God, accepts it, um, but then uh, all the worries and stresses of life, you know, the anxieties, um, the, the, the want for wealth and pleasure and money and uh, the want of social status gets in the way and they, they, they fall away uh, from the word of God because they see those things as more important. And then we have the fourth soil. Uh, the fourth soil is the good soil. And that good soil uh, is supposed to represent those who have good hearts. Um, you know, they, they are pure and they hear the word of God. They retain it and then uh, they produce a crop. Uh, and uh, there's, you know, there's, there's, there's a bit there. Um, I want to bring out two main things uh, during this time. Um, the, the first one is that uh, really this parable is, um, in, in one sense, a sense of comparison. It's an opportunity to look at ourselves and think, how are we going? You know, are we uh, this fourth soil who is, uh, you know, hearing the word of God, retaining it, and then producing a crop? Or are we um, more like the third soil? And as soon as our life gets really hard, um, we kind of focus inwards instead of outwards on God. You know, we kind of ignore our daily Bible reading. We don't uh, really feel like going to church, but we go anyway because we kind of have to. Um, you know, um, I think, uh, especially during uh, this really, really strange time, um, a lot of people would really be able to, to kind of identify with the third soil, right? Life is really, really hard. And during that time, uh, you know, it's really easy to kind of forget about uh, God and the Bible and uh, all those promises that are, that are made and all that reassurance um, because we're focused uh, on the kind of the material things. You know, what are we going to do um, when we can't see our friends? How are we going to do when we have to be forced with our families? Um, but uh, I, I think 
that there's a real uh, kind of a disillusion there because um, the, these soils aren't just who you are, right? You are just, oh, I'm the first soil or I, I'm the second soil. Um, no, the, um, the, the goal is to be the fourth soil, the good soil. Uh, and that does not happen naturally. And so uh, as Jesus is kind of talking, he's hoping uh, to bring about this fourth soil, this good soil. Um, and how does that good soil happen? Well, you hear the word, you retain the word, uh, and then you produce the crop. So as he's going out and he's spreading the word, um, you know, people are hearing the word, but the ones who actually retain it, well, they're, they're disciples, right? They're the ones who go to him and they ask, what does the parable mean? You know, we, we've been thinking about it, we've been tossing it over, but we don't understand it. Please explain it to us. And Jesus does so. He is supposed to, you know, the disciples are supposed to be Jesus's crop. He's the fruit of the word of God being preached. And so if we also want to be the fourth soil, we need to be doing similarly. We want to hear the word of God. We want to be reading our Bibles. We want to, we want to be retaining it. We want to be uh, kind of being able to remember what it says about God, about us, about the whole kind of uh, story of salvation, as well as what is to come in the new creation. And then we want to be producing a crop. We want to be applying all this information to our lives. You know, how do we live in light of being saved? Well, we act as lights to the world, so that by the hope uh, of, uh, by the will of God, others might be able to see that um, and come to faith as well. Uh, so that's one of the big takeaways is, you know, if you want to be that good soil and you identify as a different soil, then all you need to do is work towards it. You build up those, uh, those disciplines of kind of daily Bible reading, um, you know, talk to um, members of your family, members of uh, the church, um, if you have any questions, like, um, that's kind of how you do it. Um, the second thing uh, that I want to bring out is that there's a big idea that uh, when the word of God is preached, um, there is a response. That's, uh, you know, qu quite big, right? Like, um, Jesus is going around, he says, you know, the soul goes around, he, he spreads out to all these different people, but every single one of them responds, and that is the power of the word of God, right? Whether that response is unbelief, uh, whether it's, you know, joy that only is temporary, um, or um, even if the response is um, seeing the worldly things as more important than it, um, it, it does get a response. And personally, I find that really comforting because I know that when I'm preaching the word of God or talking to people about Jesus, um, you know, it, it's not me that I have to rely on, it's the power of the word of God. And the word of God is very powerful. And so I, I believe that when I'm talking to people that God is working through me, through the word of God, to bring about a response in the person I'm talking to. Now, I don't get to see that response, right? That response is between them and God. But I do it in the hopes that they might be that fourth soil. They might become that fourth soil. You know, it might take five years, it might take 10 years, it might take 20 years, but I am still uh, eager to go out and spread the word. And I do so without a fear of judgment, because whenever judgment is directed, we might feel as though we're, we're being judged because we believe in the word of God. Um, but, but actually, in a more kind of realistic sense, um, it, it is the word of God itself that they are judging. You know, it's the word that they're responding to, not us as people. It, it's the beliefs held within the word of God. And, and so when we're going around and are telling people, we should be able to do it without fear of judgment because really that judgment isn't directed towards us, um, it's directed towards God. It's their rejection of Him, or His acceptance of Him, which is what we really want uh, to be telling people about, and what we want to be getting. Um, but I just want to uh, leave you with those two kind of big points uh, to kind of think about and mull over. Um, but yeah, um, I hope you enjoy, and uh, we'll see you uh, next week uh, for the parable of the lost son. Uh, we'll see you there.